Hey there, everybody. We are ready for week two. We are doing a six week project to make a granny square blanket. Last week was the first week and we did a single crochet in the back loop. This week we are going to be doing a double crochet through the front and back post. Uh, your finished square will look like this. Again, you're not making one, you're actually going to make five. Um, of each square. So you did five of the first week, five of the second week, and we go on each week doing five squares. That sixth week of the class, we're going to put them all together and to make one big blanket. So this week, like I said, we're doing a double crochet through the front and back post. You're going to need um, actually either two of these, uh, this size, the seven ounce of the Super Saver, or you can buy one of the jumbo rolls of, of Red Heart yarn, or if you find a, a comparable uh, brand, that's great, uh, as long as it's a medium weight, size 4, um, usually using a, a 5.5 millimeter hook. We are using uh, a J hook, which is 5.75 millimeters. The other item you will need is scissors. So if you have that, you are good to get started. I will take you through how to do this stitch. So we're going to start with the slip knot. Uh, I'll show you again if you haven't done that before or just to get us started. Let me hold my yarn in my hand, wrap it around, pull it through, and then you can let go and cinch up your knot. I really like that it leaves um, a very small, very flat, low profile knot in your project. So I will do that one more time. Start by pinching that tail in your fingers, wrapping it around, cross over, go underneath and pull it through. I really like that this knot isn't bulky when you're trying to tuck your ends in or make your project look nice. So give yourself a little bit of slack so you can get through there. Oop, that's a little too much. Okay, so we're going to start by doing a base chain of 30. So if you haven't chained before, you yarn over and pull it through. Simple as that. Don't count that first one, uh, so this will be one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to stop at 20. You're going to keep going until you get to 30. That way yours is long enough to match up to, um, to your other squares. Okay. I'm just using 20. That way you can get a good idea about how to do the stitch and what it will look like as you're going and also how to finish off. So we've done 20 or like I said, you'll be doing 30. Now we're going to do a double crochet. If you haven't double crocheted before, you're going to yarn over, got twisted around there, go into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. This whole first row we're just going to double crochet all the way across. So yarn over, we're ready for our next double crochet, go through the next chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's a double crochet just like normal. We're going to keep going all the way down the line. Yarn over, pull it through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay. Next one. So like I said before, you're either going to need two rolls of your Super Saver yarn or you're going to need a jumbo roll to make these five squares. Uh, double crochet uses more yarn. You will not be able to get five. I have tried <laughs> to get five out of one roll and it did not quite make it. So. Just make sure you have enough supplies to get yourself through the project, or I guess run back to the store or hop online.
So this week our square has a little more texture than last week. Last week we had a, a few little um, ridges on the front and back side. Uh, this week, as you can see, it's textured on the front and the back really well. They almost look like little cables like you would knit. Um, lots of texture, really soft and chunky. Uh, we'll make your blanket really soft and cozy and give it a complete different look, especially compared to the stitch we did last week. So we're just going to keep double crocheting all the way down this row. Like I said, you are doing 30 stitches. I am just doing 20 to give you an idea of how to do the stitch. questioning my color choices this week, uh, that is okay. I'm not going to be putting this yellow uh, color into my blanket that I'm making. It's just an extra skein we had laying around. clear through to the end and yes we are going into that last uh, chain the foundation chain all right you've gotten to the end of your first row maybe tug it out a little bit they start to curve at the ends um, especially since we're not chaining when we go around uh, the corners so we're going to flip our project over don't chain between your rows all right, now we're ready for doing the front and back post. The looser your tension when you do this project, uh, the easier it is to kind of see the posts and work between them. Once you get this second row done, you'll be able to follow in each row and, and be able to tell where your front and back posts are. So let's get started. Um, this first stitch I'm gonna yarn over since we're still double crocheting. Now I'm going to bring this post to the front, this, um, double crochet stitch from last time. So since I'm bringing it to the front, I'm going to have to go behind it, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. The first stitch is a little tricky to see, but uh, once you get into subsequent rows, it'll, it'll be very clear. Uh, the next stitch, we're going to go um, make it a back post. So we're going to yarn over. We're actually going to come through the back, go over that. So we're putting that next post in the back. Yarn over, pull through. Okay, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, still a little hard to see, but we did move that post, that double crochet from the first row, moved it to the back. So that's our back post. Now we're going to do a front post. Now that we're not on the end, it might look a little easier. So yarn over. We're going to bring this post to the front by going behind it. Okay. Pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. You can kind of see we brought that post up to the front. Next one, we're going to push this post to the back by coming in from behind it. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, you can kind of see we did move it to the back. Now we're going to do a front post. By going behind it, next stitch is a back post, so we're going to come in from behind, pull that yarn through, yarn over, pull through two, Oops. yarn over, pull through two. So we're still double crocheting, but instead of going through uh, the loops up here, we're going in front or behind these posts. Okay. The next one's a front post, yarn over, come behind it, that way it brings it to the front, makes a front post. 
Next one is a back post. You're going to go every other stitch like that down the row. So we'll be in front. Like I said, the looser your tension, the easier it's going to be, be able to see where these posts are. The reason I like using this um, size J hook is it's a little bit bigger. Um, I don't grip it quite as tight. It's easier to make some uh, more loose stitches. So if you're having trouble with a, a hook you're using, try using a size bigger. It can alter the size of your, your product or pattern uh, of what you're working on. So you can compensate for that or if it's not essential to your project. If, if this helps you, go for it. Post. Oops, lost it there. Okay, we're getting there. This is why I only wanted to use 20 stitches instead of the full 30 for this demonstration. Um, just takes a little bit of time. Once you get going on it, you can put on some music or um, Netflix or an audiobook while you're working. This pattern does not require any counting other than your initial chain. So it's a good multitasking <laughs> stitch as well. Okay, we've got to that last one. Uh, don't leave it out. It's going to look funny when your other rows are, are going on and this little knob sticking out. So don't, don't miss the last guy there. All right, so that was a back post, the stitch before it, so we're going to bring this post to the front by going behind it. I know there's not another stitch to go between here, but go ahead and grab your yarn, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay. So this is what it looks like so far. It's still uh, not super clear about your post, but once we get the next row on there, um, it should stand out a lot more like our finished square here. So we're going to flip the project over. Okay. And we're going to go back the same way we came. This first one, we ended it as being a front post, but now that we flipped it over, it is a back post. So we need to go in front of it. I know there's not another stitch here, but we can put it behind us by going through here. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now the next one is a front post on this side, so we're going to yarn over and we need to go behind it to bring it to the front. So the stitch we're using is still double crochet, but instead of going in these top stitches, like I said before, we are going um, through these posts of the previous rose stitch. The next one is a back post. So we need to come in from behind. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, now that's getting even more defined that that post is moving toward the back. So the next one is a front post. Combined here. We're going to go all along this row doing the same thing. Where there's a back post on this side, do a back post. Where there's a front post, do a front post. Like I said, the more rows you get down, the easier it is to see where the where that texture is. So definitely that second row or the first one you're using posts is definitely the hardest row on this project. Just seeing where they are and being able to either pull a post toward the front or to push it toward the back. You will definitely get the hang of this. Um, you have 
five squares to do of this pattern, so you will get very, very familiar with it. Um, if I didn't mention in the previous video, or if you didn't hear me say it, the reason I like doing these granny squares is that they're, they're really small, manageable projects, and you can still make a blanket just by doing a few squares at a time. Um, you know, rather than sitting there and going all the way across a whole long row of a blanket, and if you sit down to work for, I don't know, a half hour or an hour, um, not really seeing much progress is a little discouraging. Uh, it can be for new crochet, new to crochet people, or if you've done it a while, it, it just doesn't seem like you make a lot of progress on something so long, uh, doing a full-size blanket all at once to where I like to piece it out into, into smaller squares, to make a blanket when you're done by piecing them all together. So if you're like me or you're trying something new and want to learn some new stitches, this project is definitely for you. Um, it's got a big sense of accomplishment once you get a, a whole square done and just doing a few more of the same stitch than learning a new stitch or changing if you already know the, the new stitch we're doing. Alright, so I'm to that last stitch. Like I said, if you're ever unsure if you need to do another stitch or not, you can turn and go to the next row, and then if you get a stitch or two in, you're going to see this sticking out and go, oh, yep, you're right. So backtrack, pull out slowly until you get back to where you missed your stitch. That's the really nice part about crochet versus knitting. It's a lot easier to get to where you um, where you had a little a little mistake. So this last stitch, it is a back post. They are a little harder to do on the ends where you don't have another stitch to kind of zigzag through. So we got that back post done. All right, we're done with that second row. Like I say, you're gonna continue doing this over and over until you get a nice square shape. Obviously, this is 20 stitches instead of 30. Um, but go until you have a nice, square shape. That's pretty well squared off. They do have a lot of give to them, especially double crochet. They're awfully chunky, but um, you say you're going to keep going until you get a nice square shape. Then we are going to tie off. So give yourself a little slack. We don't want to drop a stitch while we're trying to do this. Cut a tail. We're going to yarn over and pull through, but don't pull it all the way tight. Leave a little loop here. That's where you're going to stick your hook back in. This time, yarn over, pull through all the way, pull it tight, makes a nice little knot. Okay, also, if you're keeping up on things, you're tucking in your ends now instead of waiting till later. Uh, you'll thank me. <laughs> so, we're going to camouflage and hide this tail in. We'll go this way first. You can use your hook or a embroidery needle or a smaller hook if your stitches are a little tight. Um, I'm going to loop it through any which way. There's no rhyme or reason where any of these need to go. We're just trying to get it out of the way. And sometimes the tails will still come out when you wash the blanket or just through everyday use, but that's okay. Just tuck them back in, not a big deal. And if you tuck your tails in uh, as you go, it's going to be a lot less work when you're done. Having to tuck in two tails for every square for every week of projects. We've been doing five squares of each. It could get to be quite the task. Oh, oh, there we go. Alright, once you have it tucked in there, you can trim the tail shorter. I'm going to try to run this one along that base chain. See if we can't hide it in there. <laughs> it's fighting me today. I'm 
this should not change the look of your stitch. Blend it all in there. Trim it shorter. And there you go. Yours will obviously be normal size, but this is the project we're making this week. Like I said, you need to make five squares of this pattern and five squares of last week's pattern. We will be back next week with a different pattern for you. And we are going to make a blanket in six weeks. So hope you come back and join us. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, and I don't know, leave us a comment. Thanks again.